Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So I'm sure I'm going to get a thrashing in the comments below for the clickbait title. Um, I have stopped taking resveratrol, not completely. I am now cycling it. So enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and find out what I'm doing and why I'm actually doing it. So having watched an interview between Andrew Huberman and David Sinclair, where the subject of resveratrol obviously came up, and also watching a video by Riman Luman, I've decided to amend my resveratrol supplementation protocol. A note on Riman, he's a metabolic researcher with over 15 years experience in the field. And I've also had a permission to review one of his more recent videos where he dives a lot deeper into the possible reasons for the so-called resveratrol controversy. And that video will be coming out quite soon. Let's take a look at the first clip of Andrew Huberman and David Sinclair, where David Sinclair talks about resveratrol as an antioxidant and also the reason that you should try to get your body's defenses up as opposed to giving your body defenses in the form of supplementation. When I worked on resveratrol as a longevity molecule, first we showed it in yeast and worms and flies and mice. Uh, before that, it was thought that resveratrol was good for your heart in red wine when you drink red wine because it's an antioxidant. So then we showed that it extended the lifespan of yeast cells through this um, genetic pathway, the sirtuins. And we then tested whether resveratrol, if we changed one atom to make it not an antioxidant, guess what? It still worked fine. So it wasn't its antioxidant activity that was extending lifespan. It was its ability to turn on the yeast's defenses against aging. Conversely, when we gave the yeast antioxidants, they lived shorter. So yeah, that was the beginning of my mm -hmm. transformation into thinking, turn on the body's defenses, don't give it the antioxidant. In this second clip, David Sinclair talks about his critics. Now he doesn't name names, but I'm sure we can all guess who he's talking about. He highlights their shortcomings in that they don't read all of the supplemental data that backs up his studies. Or if they do, they certainly don't pass that information on. And in my humble opinion, they're just jumping to conclusions, conclusions that meet their particular narrative. If we gave it to mice, their whole lifespan. They were protected against a high fat diet, which we call the Western diet. They had lean organs. They lived slightly longer, but not a lot. This is what's not known, though it's in the supplemental data of the paper that nobody ever reads. The mice that were given resveratrol every second day on a normal diet lived dramatically longer than any other group. So people out there, you know, my, my critics say, oh, resveratrol didn't extend the lifespan of mice on a normal diet, therefore it's not aging, it's just protecting against a high fat diet. Well, look at the supplemental data, please. If you give it to, to the mice every other day, we had mice living over three years. And what that told me is that probably you don't want to be taking a supplement every day. You can take it either every other day or give your body a rest. So in that clip, David Sinclair talks about the beneficial effects that can be gained from cycling the supplement. As a result, I'm going to cut down my resveratrol intake. I'm now only going to have one gram a day with my yogurt on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Although I will still eat my full fat yogurt with my tablespoon of parsley every single day. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes. I've got a couple of questions. I'd love to see your feedback in the comments section below. If you've already seen the Huberman Lab David Sinclair interview, have you reduced your resveratrol intake? And if not, would you consider doing it having now seen these two clips? Now, I always watch uh, Brad Stanfield's videos and I think in the main he's very, very good indeed. Although I don't think I've ever heard him mention the supplemental data that David Sinclair makes reference to in these clips and in the Huberman Lab uh, interview. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below. Another benefit of if you start to cycle your resveratrol is that it's probably going to last you at least twice as long now. So there's a fiscal benefit as well. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.